everyone, welcome to another episode of Rothschild. And this past weekend was Lightbox Expo. Yes, basically it's convention featuring traditional and digital artists, 3D modelers, art students, industry professionals, and everyone in between. Thousands of people showed up and it was absolutely incredible. And with so many artists being there at the same time, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to ask 20 of my friends and professional artists what their best art advice is for artists. You know, we had advice ranging from stuff that's super personal to something super tactical. So I think this video is really gonna help you guys. So let's jump in. Hey everyone, Hello. we're here with someone that needs no introduction. Uh, my name is Sam. This is my idol, Ross. Um, Ross is the sole reason I got into digital art online. Don't. Only reason, Ross. I would love to ask, what is your best art advice you have for artists? The best art advice that I think is most important to me personally is, especially in this day and age where there's so much focus on social media, uh, to focus on yourself and not the numbers. That's, that's like what I feel like elevated me to like a different level than before because I used, to foc I used to focus solely on the numbers and think like, oh, if I can get more likes, this means my, my, my account's gonna grow, this means eventually I'm gonna get somewhere. And like when the numbers just don't hit, when they just don't get to that level, I'm like, oh man, like I did something wrong in this piece. Like this is just not working out, yeah. right? As soon as I stopped focusing on that, as soon as I started like trying to uh, improve more myself as an artist, trying to be more introspective about my skill level, what I can learn from other people, how I can improve, and just trying to be the best artist that I can be. I always say this, try to be the best artist that you can be yeah. before you start focusing on all the numbers because that's gonna stunt your growth. Yeah. If you focus on the numbers, it's gonna stunt your growth. So my art advice is to shut out the noise. I know it's hard, but shut out the noise from social media, focus on your own growth. We all know her, it's Rachel Bradley. Hey guys. And I can't believe we're meeting for the first time here too, I know. right? Oh my gosh, I was so excited when I saw you here. <laughs> This is something that's come up for me a lot this weekend is I'm actually really self-conscious about my artwork. I see other people drawing in their sketchbooks and there are so many good artists here and I'm like, I can't do that. Like so much of my work is a complete failure. When I open my sketchbook, I'm like, that was terrible and I put it away again. Um, I don't think that failure is appreciated enough as like a learning tool. Yeah. No one just picks up a pen and draws well first time. It yeah. takes so long to get good. There is like a mountain of failure underneath yes. every good artist. Yeah, yeah, like it is sure. necessary to fail in order to do the good artwork. And I think it's not normalized enough. So many people I see agree. like the portfolio and they're like, my work doesn't look like that. Sometimes I draw absolute trash. Yeah. I think that every failed drawing is a step closer to being where you want to be. So do I not agree. be ashamed. Yeah. Embrace it. See it as the step exactly. it needs to be. And it makes a better journey, you know? Exactly. What if you're good all the time? That's so boring, right? Exactly. Um, so I think having peaks and valleys and like learning from your failure can make you a better artist. I'm here with one of the oldest veterans in the industry, Anthony Francisco, who worked on like literally all the Marvel films. <laughs> But I would love to ask you, what is your best art advice for artists? Be patient with yourself. You know, when you're when you're going through frustrations in your art, to know that there's a process. You need to go through the process to get to where you need to go. You know, and and there'll be a lot of failures and a lot of like accomplishments. But uh, at the same time, you know, just just be patient with yourself, really. All right, so my advice, maybe a little unexpected, but is to take care of your body. We only get one body in this life, and as artists, we're using our hands so much. And I know everyone always says, you know, stretch it out, you gotta do that, make sure you take breaks and stretch. But beyond that, like, the, these companies that we work for, they're never gonna value our body. They're never gonna make that a priority. So we always have to make sure that we're putting our body first, or making sure we're getting our rest, we're not working for too long, and if we have to work for too long, we make sure we give ourselves that, like, extra bit of rest and recovery afterwards, so we can get back to 100 percent yeah yeah oh my god devin elkers for president <laughs> hey everyone i am so excited to be here with my good friend aliza ivanova she is so 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 talented she's quite familiar you know she made this beautiful nemo piece for me and thank you so much thank for that. you it was awesome <laughs> my best art advice is consistency mm -hmm. that to me has been the biggest thing yeah is through Thick and thin, making sure you keep creating, because in the, in hindsight, it's been the biggest. Um, you get the biggest growth even with small little steps that you do. Oh. Do you so, draw like every day still? Yeah. Really? Like even a little bit. Even if it's like ten minutes. You make sure I make a point in yeah. it. Yeah. And oh. it's 
it, you turn a something that's maybe painful right now uh -huh. into second nature. Wow. To the point where you don't even think about it, it just comes naturally and that way you can just keep creative, keep producing stuff and cool stuff comes out of that sometimes, like yeah. surprises. My best advice is just draw whatever makes you happy, whatever, anything that you love, just follow that. Uh, it's, it always will end up good. Yeah, I feel like nowadays people like look around and see, oh, what other, what are other people like drawing? Sure. And yeah, yeah. I think it's more genuine, Absolutely. always more authentic if you draw what sparks you joy, yes. right? Yeah. And just follow your gut <laughs> yeah. and do what makes you happy. Ergo John, What's up, everybody? this is crazy. I feel like Voft is like where I meet everyone. Yes. <laughs> So my best art advice would be to find what you are passionate in. Um, and I know it sounds like you hear that a lot, but a lot of people focus on study, 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 study all the time. You should take time to do what you just love the most because that's going to be what makes you stand out. That's gonna give you the passion to keep going when you wanna give up and that's gonna happen a lot. And that's just gonna be what makes you the happiest. And it's gonna be why you do art in the whole, like the whole point. I'm here with Jake Morrison. We have a really funny story, but in 2019 Lightbox, I had a panel and it starts in five minutes and I needed hair gel. I needed to look good for this panel. And so I ran to him because he looked like he had good hair. At the time I did. <laughs> uh, I would say to artists trying to break in right now, create your own thing first, your own IP. That way your employers or anybody looking to hire you can reference something and have a full display of your skills. So develop your own thing first and then people will find you. Yeah, I feel like when I started Nima and that book project, people started like, oh, what's that? You know, and it adds a little bit of like, just to your name, maybe something that really is an extension of who you are. Right? Yeah, and yeah. it makes you feel like a more well-rounded artist and storyteller in general. Um, so I think aspiring artists, if you're in the point where you're getting your portfolio ready to submit to studios, I would really recommend that you look at the art of books from those studios. You really want to see what the company values and what kind of work that they're doing in-house currently. So so then you can tailor your portfolio to be closer to what they're looking for. That's that's so great. That's amazing. I feel like right now everyone's just wanting to put everything in their portfolio yeah. and trying to get a job and apply everywhere, yeah. but trying to make it more specific. Yeah, about, and especially because nowadays we have so many tools that are digital, yeah. you don't have to print out a whole book. So every place that you apply to, I would really recommend that you tailor your portfolio to exactly that studio. Yeah. So then you're making work that is for them specifically. Like, be open-minded about your opportunities that could come along. I think I've worked in such a wide range of different types of work. I've worked in live action. I've worked in like prime time. I worked in like action shows, comedy. And I think uh, that versatility really came through for me throughout every project that I got that I think honestly, I don't think I would have gotten this opportunity now had I not been open and brave enough to take the chance. So I'm like, yeah. I've never done this before. Don't know if I could do it, but you won't know until you try. Right. And I think if I missed all those opportunities, I'd be at such a different place right now. So right. don't be afraid of that. Yeah. Yeah. Keep an open mind. I feel like every opportunity is a chance for you to grow, yeah. you know, and you never know what you like or don't like if you don't try everything. I'm here with super talented, amazing artist Pernil. We have a panel together in like 50 minutes-ish? I think so, right? yeah. 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 <laughs> What's your best art advice for aspiring artists? Well, my best art advice is to be true to yourself and be consistent. For me, I found that I felt like I was doing pretty good, but it wasn't until I showed consistency online, especially if you want to curate your like your online profile and that's how you want to see if you can get a job. Show consistency and show uh, consistency in what kind of art style you want to do. Like for me, I wanted to be a character designer and I wanted to specialize in female characters. So wow. I specialized in that and I knew that bringing in personality into the characters yeah. is one of the things that really would get me where I wanted to go. Yeah. So I just really focused on that and, and bringing that forward and then also going to things like this. Yeah, yes. yeah. I feel like See convention, people. conventions are a great yeah. way to network and just talk to someone. I feel like we're so used to the digital connection through a screen and in person you can have much more authentic interaction, yes. right? And especially for me, I, I don't live here. I'm from Denmark. I live in Kenya. So yeah, so like it, it can be done from anywhere. Um, I would say a lot of people say you gotta put in the sort of like 10,000 hours, you know, craft to make it perfect. Yeah. But one of my high school teachers actually uh, taught me that craft just make it permanent. Oh. So that's the scary thing is make sure you have the right mentor, yeah. the right 
you know, basically the right path for learning, or yeah. you might having that crush actually. That oh, really? Hard to to break out from. So it's not just about practicing, mm. but I would say practicing the right, the right um, skill. You know, the right the right mind mindset. Ooh. Yeah. So. so you're saying those 10,000 hours, if you maybe spent it a little wrong, yeah, it could kind of you're for like focusing too much on the wrong things or yeah. like something that's too specific or. Yeah maybe too narrow-minded, yeah. maybe it will, you, it will become a crutch. I yeah. guess, you know, it'll be hard to break out from. Right. Because then you already spent so much time learning it. Yeah. That it's hard to break out of that habit. A lot of people ask me, how do I get to what it is I'm doing and what's, what's some advice I can pass along? And I think my best advice would be to, if you're thinking about large projects and bigger things, to start small. So take a big project, for example, a book, and break it down into smaller bite-sized chunks. So I don't even mean just like month to month, I mean like week to week or an hour to hour. Um, the reason I was able to finish all of the books and the projects that I've been able to do is because I took it from a year long process and a year long project and I divided it down into weekly and hourly goals. I just want to take a minute to give a super special thank you to ArtStation for supplying metal prints for the show. The detail look crisp, the color looks so vibrant, they turned out so beautiful. So a big thank you to ArtStation and everyone who grabbed a metal print. If you want to grab one yourself, head to rossjaws.com and let's jump back into the video. Uh, best art advice, I mean, do what you love. I know at the beginning it's tough to like get, you know, you're looking at companies, you're doing, looking at all that stuff to get to that level. But once you're, you're comfortable with your level, just kind of go for it, do what you love, spend the time doing what you love. And then in the long, long run, you're gonna look back and you're gonna enjoy everything you've done. To yeah. me, that's like about the journey, right? Like you look yeah. back, you know, three, four, five years and look at the old work and be like, yes, like this is me, right? right. Like that's always so important. And you can you get caught sometimes into like the industry and what this company wants, what that company wants. But like use that passion to create for the future. You know? Yeah, it seems like every artist I talk to goes through this journey, right? I feel like you have to do everything and then find out what you want to do, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. It takes time. It's not easy, but uh, you know if you keep at it, you find it. You got this. <laughs> yeah, you got this. <laughs> What's your best art advice for artists? Um, to like always keep going. And I know it's super hard. And I would say every artist has like the similar struggles. Like it's always, it's not like you get good and then you don't have struggles anymore. Yeah. Like it's always like practicing and yeah, and not being afraid to reach out to other artists. Yeah, no, that's a good one. I feel like sometimes people think they're the wall, right? right? And just send a DM. If you really like that artist and you want yeah. to connect, just send a DM. You never know, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, other artists did that for me too, so I like to give back. Oh. Check it out! Ah, oh, Nemo Galaxy hoodie. That's awesome. I think my best art advice is to obviously draw every day, but draw things that like inspire you. Like, do the work that you you know, if you're at a show, what would you buy? Like, I'm mm, so picky good. when I'm at a show, and I think like, okay, like what would I make that would like get my like cheap self to buy it? Hey everyone, I am here with a dear, dear, dear teacher of mine, Kevin Chen. Was, oh my gosh, I think over a decade ago, I took your class at school, right? Character yeah. design. Uh, that, I got arts into <laughs> That is literally my favorite class. No lie, I love that class, so thank you so much for everything you've done. Yeah. I would love to ask you, what's your best art advice for artists? Probably some simple, pretty practical advice. I mean, one thing I would say that my advice for, this is more for new students. I would say is um, get a good foundation. It's okay to have a little bit overkill in your foundation because uh, you know your career is going to be long. You don't know industry is going to change. You're going to change. So make sure to have that foresight. Kind of invest a little bit more. Like learn all your basics. Understand how things work because uh, that way that's how you're going to have flexibility and longevity in your career. So yeah. So that's one thing I think is really important. And second thing I think is also for beginners is um, I would say have patience. So I know nowadays is everyone's posting great work. There's a lot of talent out there, but a lot of time we don't actually see the hard work, the amount of mileage, the time spent, especially I think with COVID, we're all at home. It's harder to actually meet people in person. But when you, especially at school, you can really see people are at work. You see people work, how hard they work and how consistent. Mm -hmm. We are drawing cartoons, making animations, yeah. making games. Yeah. You should have fun. So yes. learn to enjoy the process. All right, so my best art advice for artists, I think is no rules, just tools because it just doesn't matter what you do, like just just have fun, I feel like. And I, uh, the moment that I felt validated by other artists 
to use different techniques yeah. that, that I didn't see before or whatever. Because I was also doing a few things that I didn't know if they were safe or uh, if cheating or whatever, like with layer effects. Yeah. Yeah. And then I saw my favorite artists using those techniques. Yeah. And I was like, I can do it too, if they're doing it. And right. I can also show people that other things they've never seen before are fine too. So yeah, yeah now I just have fun and I want everybody to just have fun with whatever they're using, you know? The advice that I tell a lot of people is just how to practice. Okay. Right. So, so you got to make sure that you don't just draw, okay. right? Like a lot of people say, like, how do you get good? And and or they ask how to get good, and people tell them just draw more, draw more. Which is yes, that is an answer. But if you're if you're starting out, you can't just draw. It'll it'll take a lot longer than if you deliberately practice something where you have a specific goal in mind. Every exercise that you practice. Has, there has to be a purpose for it. I see. And you, you have to be identifying what you need to get good at okay. and then practice those things uh, and then try to get feedback on it, whether it's from somebody or by trying to analyze it on your own. Like if you're trying to get better at proportions or um, developing your eye, you could draw from a photo, overlay it over the photo, and get feedback on how did I do? Did I mess up on something? Right, right. right? Otherwise, you're not, you don't know if you made a mistake. But to kind of balance that out, you can't just be doing exercises all the time. That's yeah. boring. You're just yeah, gonna yeah, yeah. like, you're gonna burn out yeah. and you get like, just like I don't like doing this anymore. Yeah. You're just doing exercises. So always try to apply the things you're learning to real projects, personal yeah. projects that you want to do. Hey everyone, I am here with the one and only Bobby Chu, the creator of Lightbox. And a funny story, when I was 15 or 16 in high school, I used to listen to Bobby's videos for inspiration, just motivation. You used to make those kind of hour long tutorials and all you would do would talk about like motivation and like if you're in a dark spot, this is how you get out of it. And it really helped me. I used to draw to them. I would love to ask you, what is your best art advice for artists? that part of it, when you want to love something, you can learn to love that thing. Mm -hmm. And there's certain parts about art which can be a little bit more difficult to love, like uh, exercises, repeated exercises and things like that. But just like learning to love exercising or, or healthy foods, things like that, it's something that you want to put in effort into. and. If you want to get to the highest heights that you can, you got to really protect that love of your art. I, I don't feel like you can really get to your potential without truly just wanting to fall in love with your art. I love that. Just like fall completely in love with it with no walls, no boundaries, right? Yes, yes. What do you love right now? What is something, no walls, no boundaries you love right now? I love doing this Lightbox Expo. Oh, you know? that's amazing, yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's just so nice to get everybody together. And yeah. It's all about putting a spotlight on the yeah. artist behind our favorite things. Aww. Movies, videos, yeah. uh, illustrations, games, yeah. whatever. Yeah, oh, thank you so much for everything you've done. Like, you're gonna inspire the next generation of artists by just having Lightbox. So, thank you for being you. Um, you've inspired me when I was a kid, and um, you still inspire me today. So. Same, same right back at you. You inspire me every time I see that new video. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome back, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully this video has helped you. And a big thank you to everyone who stopped by the booth and said hi. Meeting you guys is literally one of my favorite things to do. I feel like I'm connecting with my community on a much deeper level than behind the screen. And a big thank you to Bobby for making this all happen bringing all these artists and fans together, it turned out absolutely incredible. And so thank you guys so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Remember, every day is the Color Dodge Day.